If you guys haven't seen the latest blue post on Wowhead, Season of Discovery Phase 2 information has been released by Blizzard. And today we're going to deep dive into that phase two preview video. We're gonna get my live reactions. Tons of new information for new content has been released today. We're gonna to talk about runes. We're gonna talk about Nomergon. And I'm gonna give you guys some insight as to what is significant here, what kind of things we're gonna be looking at and how they're affecting each different class. So let's get right into it, guys. Hi, I'm Lenny cook Saverline, and I'm a producer on WoW Classic. Back at BlizzCon, we had the absolute pleasure of finally sharing Season of Discovery with you all, and we've loved watching all of the new challenges you've overcome, the meta you've created, and the adventures you've all had in Phase yeah. 1. And now we'd like to chat with you about Phase 2. Today, we're going to do a brief overview of some of the new adventures in store for you. Our topics today include information about our new 10-player raid Nomergon, dungeon updates, rune ability updates, PvP updates, profession updates, there's and actually, more, which should help answer... Like, what's crazy is there's been such a drought of information. Like, you see a lot of, like, news YouTubers, like, posting, like, the same stuff over and over and over again. Like, like looking at small little tweets with, like, this is, like, an insane amount of information to just come out randomly, seemingly. So this is awesome. This is going to be so freaking cool. Some of the questions we've gotten around our previous phase. I'm and so where we're excited going to see one. what this is. We're going to pop through our slides pretty fast, so you may want to pause or watch back through the recording if you want to catch everything on the slides. We're also going to put the build up on the PTR soon. We're doing something similar to phase one, where we only make the era and hardcore content available, not the season itself. It is likely there will be some data mining, but beware, not everything you see data mined will actually be in the patch. The spills will contain some experimental things, stuff for later phases, and things that maybe didn't work quite how we wanted them to. Okay. We're going to start off talking about our new raid, Nomergon. So our assistant lead designer, in, uh, Tim Jones, will be walking us through it. Take it Go away, Tim. Nomergon on the PTR. Hello there. Uh, thank you, Lenny, for that introduction. I'm Tim Jones, the assistant lead game designer on World of Warcraft Classic, and it's my pleasure to talk to you more uh, and give you a, a sneak peek at Nomergon, the second level up raid in Season of Discovery, um, and the, the raid content that you'll be participating in at level 40 in Phase 2. Let's get into it. So much like Black Fathom Deeps, uh, Nomergon will be a 10-player raid. There will be okay. six bosses. There were originally five bosses in Over Nomergon. Over 102 items. Dark Iron Ambassador. So there's one more new boss. Holy no crap. Left. More than three times the number of epics that BFD had. So BFD had three. So there's going to be nine. Wow. That's insane. Fought before. And question. And of course, redesigns from the ground up on all of the other bosses. So brand new experience overall. A okay. ton of new rewards and items, more epics than we had in Black Fathom Deeps with more sources, um, different bosses than just the last two bosses dropping those, uh, new item sets for classes to pursue, yep. the quest and rewards have been brought up to level 40, and okay. there's a brand new profession quest chain that leads into a pretty deep opportunity for people to find materials and, and craft a lot of really cool and powerful items. Uh, Josh will get into that more down the line. Sick, man. But, uh, so... I'm kind of upset that it's still 10 player. The major problem with 10 player raids is that big guilds are having like a lot of issues, like setting up like seven different raids to go into BFD. Like, and you lose in 10 player raids, you lose a lot of like support classes to the game because like there's no reason to take a support class because there's just not enough room to fit it. Like, like right now, melee cleave is really, really popular. So you kind of take your melee cleave group and you basically want to take like two of them because it's so powerful if there was a 25 man raid potentially like spell cleave would actually be viable because you can have enough characters to fit into an additional like group to actually like beef out and have like a really good spellcaster group like you could have you could run like boomkin and s priest and like a support is a true support warlock and then you can throw in a mage and then like a destro warlock and that group could like really really pump in like a 25 man group but just because it's 10 man there's just not enough room to kind of like add in the additional support characters that don't perform as well as melee characters for a like spell group to like really work so i really wish it was 25 players but it, you know 10 man like whatever it'll be it'll be it'll be super easy probably so that's what they're going for able to find materials and and craft a lot of really cool and powerful items uh, josh will get into that more down the line but uh, some of the play spaces have had some changes. For people who aren't familiar with the Grubbus and Chomper encounter, you might notice that there are some uh, radiation vents that weren't here. Those will perhaps play a part in this encounter. Crowd Pummeler uh, is now in a different oh, wow. part of the instance. I wonder what kind of mechanics something that punches you uh, really hard might have to do with being on a platform above a pit of death. Who knows? Um, oh, no. There's a lot of excited onlookers uh, ready for you to take on this this robot. Very cool. And man. Sicko Thermoplug, last boss of the instance, may have have oh added wow some additional this is completely different look at this wow uh, mechanical suits with different properties to his arsenal and you'll have to Very face cool. off against those multi-phase well. getting into a preview of the exciting loot 
Uh, there's some nods to old items. I think that one people will notice is the automatic crowd pummeler. Yeah. No longer will you have to get. Oh my gosh! Crowd Look at this. Plus 69 attack power and cat bear and dire bear forms only. That's so big. That's so big for them. And it stays a druid. Does this stay a druid exclusive item? Like, does, does the plus attack power happen for anybody else as well? Offhand plus 14. Oh, the necro, the necronomicon. Okay, so this is going to replace. This is going to be a good substitute for your main hand and your offhand, and actually like replace like the staff if you never got the staff. Wow, these are some really good items. Oh, the the chicken. They have the chicken in a, in a trinket now. That's super cool too. And then plus five to fist weapons and plus five to maces. Is this going to make like a mace build or fist weapon build actually viable for someone? That's crazy. This is some really cool loot, man. That's going to be so, so... They might as well have just made this purple. This is going to be incredibly big for druids. Wow. Increase your attack speed by 50% for three seconds. That's insane. Wow, look at this tank trinket. Increases armor by a thousand, but movement speed is reduced by 60%. That's huge. I th this is going to be mandatory on a meta warlock. You're going to have like almost like 75% damage reduction from this. Wow, that's insane. You'll be able to pick up one and then use it over and over again with the cooldown. So hopefully that's a great quality of life improvement. Yeah, there's also some fun items that you can pick up. The Trog Transfigurator 3000, little um, Orb of Deception style transforming into a Trog. It's so cool too that they're adding these like... All right. It's so cool they're adding these like not really useful trinkets, but they do cool things. Like this has always been a really cool thing in WoW. Like adding the collector, like right now there's not really like a whole lot of items to collect. So adding these collector items that aren't really impactful to like your damage are super freaking cool because some people love this stuff. This is this is so big. I agree. Our whimsical world warper. Um play around with it, see where it takes you in the world. Very and, cool. And uh some fun cosmetic items as well. <laughs> Hell yes, dude. Look at these. That's so fucking cool. Radiant ray reflectors. That's so awesome, man. Cool cosmetic items. I love it. I love it. I really hope these get put on like a challenging boss that's actually like semi-difficult to get down. And that way these items are actually like a little bit rare. And it gives you an incentive to go actually try and kill like a challenging boss. And and not like and not like get loot out of it because like like gatekeep like don't gatekeep other people out of like good loot on a hard boss but like adding the hard boss factor like that's that's super i hope that they do that here's a look at our set items you can see that some set items actually have specific set bonuses for okay so let's see where they're going with these so for the plate this is obviously going to be for like your paladins your warriors etc improve the chance to get a critical strike with melee and range attack and with spells by one percent okay so it's like a catch-all that's pretty cool i wish they would have put like like intellect here or something or maybe this has something to do with like the way that they're going to change paladins where they actually want to um where they're actually going to want to like weave in heals and stuff improve hit chance attack power and defense that's kind of cool okay so you're not gonna have to change your armor sets there's not gonna be like a tank specific armor set that's fine hyper conductive robes big armor okay i don't really care about the spirit increased damage and wow okay that's pretty big it's a lot of that's a lot of spell power on a chest i well actually i guess it's not because i guess i guess the like cinder cloth robes are going to be plus 26 so you're probably still gonna you're probably still gonna run those Improve your chance to hit with spells with melee and range attacks by 1%. Okay, cool. So hopefully, hopefully there's not like, hopefully there's not like boots for the armor set. That way you can keep the, uh, the cloth armor boots here, but chance on spell cast to increase your damage and healing by up to 40 for 10 seconds. I, I am not a fan of these RNG procs. They're kind of annoying for parsing and stuff. Um, so I'm not really a big fan of that, but cool it's going to actually give you a good reason to maybe yep so they do have the boots here so it is going to give you that interesting choice of like okay well either i'm going to take the hit or i'm going to get the rng i'm going to be the rng god and get tons of tons and tons of uh damage and attack power or damage and spell power okay let's look at the chain mill now too um great stats for for a hunter wow Improves your chance to get a critical strike with melee. Okay, so they get plus crit. That's cool. I wish they would have gave us some plus crit here. Like, we don't get any crit on chest. Hopefully, we get some crit on, like, legs or, like, boots or something. Because if not, this isn't going to be really that great. Besides, like, an RNG set. Or maybe 2% hit. 
I don't know how I don't know how good two percent hit would be. Your attacks have a five percent chance of restoring a hundred mana. This is a really cool set for for hunter for sure. Some classes. And we also have tokens now that will drop instead of having a gigantic loot list um, that contains oh, all of the God, set pieces. Man. If you if you don't know in BFD, like you could have you could have the same loot drop off, like all, all of the the entire um the entire all the set pieces could drop off all the bosses basically. So by having a token, you actually don't have to worry about getting the same freaking set piece over and over again and no one being able to use it you can get a token you can go pick like what what you what you want to get that's that's super and you're getting frustrated if the same set piece drops uh for a different class every week we've introduced set piece tokens that can be used by everyone um for a specific piece of your armor so you can pick whoever loots the boot token we'll be able to turn that in this is also going to be super super big for like splits and stuff like you can you can set people based off what they need for their splits like oh well this person needs like a boots token a chest token or like like a like a leg token for their last piece. Okay, we're gonna put them in this group, and then you can kind of space them out, like oh, like one person for each token in in the group. That's that's big. That's super big to a vendor to redeem it for their set piece boots. With Nomergon, there's a couple updates that we're making to dungeons. The first of which okay. are the addition of. Whoa, whoa, wait, I from this dungeon update, I really, really, really want to see the Wrath of Lich King mechanic introduced, where you get to where where stuns get to happen on um if if you have if you have a mob active for a certain amount of time it gains the ability to be able to stun and knock you down that way mages can't farm these dungeons like they can right now and ruin the economy quality of life skill books these are skill books that have a chance to drop off of certain creatures in wow. five minute dungeons and they add significant quality of life spells oh my gosh so paladins aren't gonna have five minute buffs anymore they might have like 30 minute buffs now or 10 minute buffs that's freaking awesome, dude. Manual of redirect. So I'm assuming this is a com- combo point um, mover from one target to the next. That's sick. I don't know what totem projection is. To your arsenal that don't take up a rune slot. So we're wow. excited for people to get their hands on these and hopefully these as solve well as some a few problems other surprises. that players have been facing, such as uh, short aura durations yeah, with uh, paladin blessings, totem control as shaman, yeah. rogues being able to uh, have a spell that allows them to manipulate what target their combo points are on, as well as many, many others. Wow, that that's for players awesome, to find man. When they that's jump so into cool. Phase two. And I'd w. like to pass off the presentation to Nora to talk more about rune abilities. Bro, so far, phase two, phase two news, absolute W, man. This is sick. Thank you very much. Hey, my name's Nora Valletta, and I'm a lead software engineer on WoW Classic. The team is very excited for you to head out and find those new rune abilities coming soon in phase two of Season of Discovery. I'm excited I'm to hear about them. peek at some of those abilities, so let's dive in. Let's hear them. Paladins. Sheath of Light will cause damage dealt with your melee weapon to also increase your spell power. It'll also cause your critical heals what? to apply an additional heal over time on the target. Guarded by the Light will cause your melee weapon hits to restore mana over time. However, the amount healed by Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Holy Shock will be reduced by half. Wow, so Rep Paladins are going to be able to off-heal now. Dealing damage with your melee weapon increases your spell power by an equal amount of 30% of your attack power for one minute. Your critical healing spells. That's awesome, man. So Paladins are going to have this like really cool like arcane niche, like like arcane mage does now, where they can actually do a ton of damage and also get, get some heals out. This is a this is big. This is big for Paladins. It might make them relevant now. Because you could you could run you could run two off healers almost. And probably get away with healing a lot of these fights. That's sick. Good for Paladins, man. They really needed something cool. Hopefully... Okay, so wait, 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 wait. So they have belt and boot engraving. So are we going to get... Are we going to get eight more runes for each class? Because they usually do three to four runes for each slot. Holy crap, man. Each time you hit a target with your melee weapon, you gain 5% of your maximum mana for per three seconds, for 15 seconds. Okay, well, the only issue with this is... Um, if this is aimed at like a healing, like a like an H pal, they don't really have any mana problems right now. But the amount healed by your flash of light, holy light, and holy shock spells is reduced by fifty percent during this mana regeneration. Um, okay, so maybe Reds just take this and run this to be at max mana the entire time. I don't know. This 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 doesn't seem very good for H pal. They don't really have mana issues apparently. Hunters, melee specialist is a passive ability which will reduce the cooldown of Raptor Strike, cause wow. it to trigger instantly. And each usage of Raptor Strike has a chance not to trigger its cooldown. Melee Specialist will also remove the cooldown of Mongoose Bite. Trap Launcher allows you to place traps at any location within oh 40 yards God, and allows you to place your traps while in combat. Additionally, no your Fire Base and Frostbeast traps have separate shared cooldowns. Bro, this is so big for Hunter. If you don't know Trap Launcher and Wrath, I completely changed the way Hunter plays. Like, now for Hunter, you 
you don't have to go into melee range anymore. I guess I guess wait, no, you still you still melee weave. But now you trap weave too. You might not have to go in you might not have to melee weave anymore. You might just be able to trap weave. Wow, that's insane. And can be placed while you're in combat. Holy crap, man. That's so big. I wonder if they're gonna do I wonder if they're gonna do the the tank hunter. Oh, they might do the tank hunter. Because okay, so trap launcher is one of the one of the things you need for tank hunter to actually work because you need a way to ge generate AoE threat. So you can actually make a tank hunter if they have one extra ruin and trap launcher. That's so cool. And then melee specialist. Uh, Raptor Strike is one of the main melee attacks for melee hunter. The main issue with melee hunter is that they're mostly just auto attacking, unfortunately. So actually, it'll give them a really good ability to um, to be casting now. That's awesome. So they'll be able to cast Mongoose, Mongoose Bite on cooldown, and Raptor Strike will be like their uh, their main ability. Uh, the RNG kind of sucks, but maybe that's to keep them from being too busted with Raptor Strike because Raptor Strike does do a lot of damage. Wow. W for Hunters, too. This is insane. While in combat. Additionally, your fire base and frost base traps have separate shared cooldowns. Warriors. Oh, Rally God. Cry is a defensive ability which can be activated to increase the health of all party and raid members within 40 yards. Oh, Blood Surge gives some of your ability that's cool. So it's like it's like a uh, it's like a raid. Yeah, it's a raid cooldown. Granting all party and raid members within 40 yards, 15% increased health for 10 seconds. That's awesome, dude. Good for them. That's way better than the old rally cry. Old rally cry. Old rally cry is kind of bad. Oh, but they have blood surge, heroic strike, bloodthirst, and whirlwind have a 30% chance to make your next slam within 15 seconds. Instant cast and cost no rage. Oh, <laughs> bro. It's just, it's just going to be another thing, dude. It's just going to be another thing for warriors. Oh my God. They're going to be insane, man. They're going to be absolutely insane. He's a chance to make your next slam instant and cost no rage. Rogues. Use shuriken toss to throw a shuriken at your enemy. If you don't know, by the way, slam is just bad until you have that. That, that ability literally just turns on slam. So it's literally just another button for you to be able to hit. It's insane to your target and up to four additional nearby targets master of subtlety causes attacks made while stealth and for a short time after exiting stealth oh okay cool so ro rogues have a have an aoe now i don't know what kind of cooldown this is on but that's awesome good for them and attacks made for stealth for six seconds after breaking stealth cause initial 10 percent damage oh my god the ambush spec is going to be disgusting people rogues are going to be deleting people bro they're going to be one-shotting people and in phase in phase two they have all of their cooldowns they have kidney shot cheap shot they have blind. They have everything, bro. Rogues are gonna be insane. This, this, this is this is this is good for them though. This might make subtlety spec a little bit more viable. Maybe cause additional damage. Priests cast mind spike to blast your target with shadow frost damage and apply a debuff, which increases the critical strike chance of oh your next mind blast gosh. on that target. This debuff can stack up to three times. And That's insane, dude. Okay, so priests might actually be good now. So they get they get a scaling primary attack ability. So this is so this is think about this if you if you play the game now think about this like incinerate. This is going to be incinerate for priests. That's big. So they're going to be spamming this, spamming this, spamming this until they can mind blast. They're going to turn around a mind blast. They're going to go back to spamming mind spike and maintaining dots. This is going to put priests on the map, bro. S priest is going to be sick. And you know what this means? This means you might actually want to run a warlock support spec to get priests additional uh shadow damage on target. So meta, this is going to make meta better. This is big. This is a big ability for priests. Priests might actually be freaking insane. And fan favorite from future expansions, pain suppression can be cast on a friendly target to significantly reduce their damage taken and increase their resistance to oh the spell for a short time. Dude, this is gonna be in oh my gosh, dude. In Warsong Gulch, in Warsong Gulch, Gulch, priests just got even better. Pain suppression is going to be mandatory in Warsong Gulch because you're gonna want to put this on your flag carrier when he's about to die. That's insane. And in the big thing here isn't even the 40% damage reduction because there's so many ways to already get this. It's the increased resistance to dispel mechanics by 65% for eight seconds. That's big, man. That's so big. So you're gonna wanna pain, you're gonna wanna pain suppress, or you're gonna wanna pain suppress, fap, and then you're just you're just gonna live forever. Wow, that's crazy. Warlocks. Invocation. When oh. Oh god, warlocks. They're either gonna ruin warlocks, like it's gonna be even worse, or it's gonna be like the best spec in the game. There's no in between for warlocks. You refresh some of your damage over time effects while they have less than six seconds remaining. Instant damage will be dealt to your target equal to one tick of that spell's periodic damage. Uh 
garbage, <laughs> absolute garbage. Um, so th this this ability is in retail World of Warcraft, and it works well because it gives people a leeway to play the game. Like it makes it makes the barrier to entry to specifically affliction builds a lot lower. It gives you a little bit of leeway when you're refreshing your dots. But this this ability is it is not good. Affliction is already bad. Um, you never refresh corruption manually anyway. Um, you do refresh emulate manually and you refresh curse of agony manually, but you're still going to want to get it to tick down all the way. It ticks every three seconds, I think. So you're still going to want to get the last, I guess you can, I guess you can refresh it a little bit early and that's cool. Siphon like doesn't really do a ton of damage and it's not going to affect no Morgan units. This is an L. This is a fat L. It makes, it makes AF better, but this isn't really that good. Most warlocks We'll take this for like quality of life, but this this isn't like plus damage. This is this is just making it easier to play Warlock. So you no longer have to worry about refreshing your dots. Lowering the, the skill moment. ceiling of Warlock. Dance of the Wicked will trigger a buff, which increases you and your pet's dodge chance anytime either of you deal a critical strike to an enemy. You'll also oh my god. You'll also both regain 2% of maximum mana. Oh my gosh, boys. Support meta. Support meta Warlock is fucking in, bro. This is huge. You and your... You and your demon pet gain dodge chance equal to the critical the spell critical strike chance each time you deal a critical strike to an enemy. That's big for tank. I don't know if that's not very big for uh, any kind of DPS or anything. So I, I guess Warlock doesn't get a plus damage increase, which kind of sucks. It means it means that they're going to be still A tier ish. They're not going to move into S tier. But that's that's a big W for support Warlock. I, I, th I think support meta warlock is going to be super in, bro. It's going to be super in. You're going to want your one of your tanks to be the meta warlock in, in your caster group. That's big. That's super big. You're supposed to gain 2% of your maximum mana when that happens. Mages. Missile Barrage gives your Arcane Blast, Fireball, and Frostbolt spells a chance to reduce the channel duration of your next Arcane Missile spell by half, reduce its mana cost to zero, and cause missiles to fire every 0.5 seconds. That's cool. So this this straight up just makes Mage Rotation more interesting across the board. Gives your Arcane Blast a 40% chance, your Fireball and Frostbolt a 20% chance to reduce the channel duration of your next Arcane Missiles. This is, this is just good. It's just straight up good. Adds interesting... Um, Play with your actual rotation for mage. Chronostatic cool. Preservation is a really cool new spell that allows you to store some of your arcane, fire, and frost energy for later use. You can only hold this energy for a short time before it... What? You can hold this energy up to 15 seconds before it combusts and expires when unleashed, heals a friendly target for 665 to 998. What? Are you kidding me? Can you, can you cast this on yourself? If you can, mages now have like... Three different ways to heal themselves while they're AOE farming. And this is just like your oh shit heal button. That's insane. Combust and expires, but you can unleash it to heal a friendly target. Shamans. Wow. Maelstrom weapon causes damage dealt with melee attacks to have a chance to reduce the cast time of your next lightning bolt, chain lightning, lesser healing wave, healing wave. Beautiful. Chain so heal, melee, melee weaving for the resto and... Stack up to five and times. Spirit of the Alpha um, is a 30 minute buff that can be cast on a friendly target to increase the threat generated by that target. You can kind of... So melee weaving for resto and elemental builds. This is cool. Reduce cast time by 20%. So you get an instant cast. Wait, does does enhance take this as well then? You get an instant cast um spell every every like what is that like 10 seconds? That's cool. I think of it like the opposite of blessing of salvation. Well, well wait, infuses the target with the spirit of an elf wolf increasing all threat generated by the target by 45%. Oh, they have an MD. That's insane. Some shamans choose to battle with one weapon in each hand. Others prefer to dish out devastating blows with a two-handed weapon. If that sounds like you, then we have two-handed mastery. Each time oh you strike an enemy my with a god, weapon, and it's on the chest and robe rune. That's huge. 30% attacks you with two-handed weapons. For wow, good for them, man. Cool, so they're going to be able to run two-handed mastery. Cool, so enhancement shaman is going to be fucking insane. Because they're going to run maelstrom weapon. They're going to run two-handed mastery. And every couple seconds, they're just going to... They're gonna, they're going to, <laughs> they're going to wind fury proc you and hit you with maelstrom weapon with a lava burst, and then get their elemental mastery proc and they're just gonna delete you. They're gonna literally one shot you. So enhance is going, enhance is going to one shot people next phase. Wow. You gain thirty percent attack speed with two handed weapons for ten seconds. Anyways, this is insane, man. Phase two is looking.
incredible, dude. This is so awesome. It's time for me to pass things over to Anna Resendez, who will be PvP sharing updates. updates on our new PvP event. Take it away, Anna. Can't wait for everyone to discover those new rooms that look amazing. By the way, let's talk about PvP for a second. The big problem with the PvP update was, or the, the big problem with the P PvP last phase, phase one, is Ashenvale PvP is a speed run is a speed run PVE event, basically. There's no there's no other way to say it. It's a speed run PVE event. So I am hoping they actually incentivize PV freaking P, man. Killing the enemy faction straight up. I don't care if they do like a capture the flag. I don't care if they do like like a domination type game mode where you're capturing points and like getting kills. Or like I don't care what they do. Just incentivize people to frag the enemies, the enemy team. That's what I want to see. Amazing. Thank you, Nora. Hello. I am Anna Sanders, and I will talk to you about PvP. In this new Let's level band, we are bringing a new PvP experience to you. You might have seen a little hint on our social media channels about this. So, our new PvP event is called the Blood Moon. The Blood Ooh. Moon rises in Strangleton Vale, bringing with it absolute mayhem. Oh. When Ashenbowl was created, we talked about how cool it would be for the event to be triggered by player activity in the area. After going through feedback and seeing how Ashenbowl played, in this event, we wanted to take a different approach and make it more predictable so you know when the battle will take place. Okay. So the Blood Moon event will happen every three hours and we have a duration of 30 minutes. Believe me, you will be able to tell when the event is happening. The Blood Moon will shine its effect during this time and bring in a mysterious red fog to the area. During this time, the whole zone will become a free-for-all PvP. Meaning, oh, allies gosh. and enemies alike will be viable Bro, targets for it's your It's gonna be charge. lit! Everyone that is in the zone during this time will become a target. During the event, killing other players will allow you to earn a currency. Which yes! will be various rewards. We'll talk about yes, dude! Real PvP, yes. Some other rewards in a little bit. You can still group up, but be warned, the Blood Moon does not smile to those that battle in raid groups and will punish you oh, for doing so. No there way. No way. So if you're going to get a raid group, you're going to get a debuff. Oh, that's so fucking cool, dude. So finally, casual Andes will stop complaining about giant raid groups getting uh, deleting them you can finally go into your little solo q pvp event where you can pretend that you're freaking swifty bro <laughs> this is on okay memes aside this is a big w for casual for casual pvpers for solo q pvpers every three hours going into like a massive free-for-all basically pvp event that's that's awesome man this is super cool there are those of course who refuse to give in the thirst of the blood if it's peace while you're sick, you can opt out of the event at any time by talking to the Sandalari emissary. You will That's not be able awesome to earn too. any rewards if you opt That's awesome too, so cowards can 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 leave. Good. Out And remember that general realm PvP zone rules will still apply. Another big difference from Ashenbowl is that there won't be any PvE objectives. That said, not only should you be wary of both enemies and allies alike, you should also keep an eye out for the Chosen of the Blood Loa, who oh. will absolutely destroy you. Does Fell River ring a bell? So... You might be wondering, oh. how do I get my hands on that sweet rewards? There will be a merchant. That's does he? Of does he drop anything? Oh, what is this? What is this? Oh, look at that ring, bro! Amber blood seal plus nine stamp plus six ant mage only increase fire damage done by sixteen percent. Oh my gosh, dude! Wow, that's insane, man! Look at this mace too. Plus ten strength, plus six agility. 50 to 93 damage. Kurabashi Arena that would assist you with this. What about the rewards? Well, there are a dozen of new class-specific item rewards. Here are some examples of the new rewards that come with the event. Oh my Additionally, gosh. Additionally, there are new quests that will help with your Arathid Basin reputation journey. Do you want to see more about the cool rewards? What about a new car? Oh. Well, okay, not exactly a car, but... Very exciting to, to participate no, in the no, 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 I messed up, I messed there up. Won't, this level 40 mount... A new car! I'm gonna... Insert the Oprah meme there. Look at these mounts, man. Um, okay, so the tiger kind of looks dumb. I really <gasps> wait, do we get the raptor? Can we ride a raptor? Let's have an appearance that is completely new to the game. I hope to see you in the battlefield. Oh, bro, bro, yes, dude. Phase two looks so lit, bro. I'm so excited. And up next, Josh will join us and wow. he will talk to you about professional. Incredible. Outfits. Hello, my name is Josh Greenfield, senior game producer on WoW Classic. Let's dive right in and talk about what we're going to be doing with Professions in Phase 2. 
I want to start by saying that we've been really thrilled with the reception to our professions editions in phase one. It was really exciting watching people sort of discover and unlock how to how to create your awesome, you know, avoid touch leather gloves and your extra mm -hmm. planers, spider silk boots and all those things. Uh, and, you know, we're going to go ahead and expand on this quite a bit for yes! phase two. Uh, there will be around 20 new recipes across all non-gathering professions. This also includes not just leather. Oh, bro. New enchants, new engineering items. Oh, new alchemy recipes, bro. Oh, my gosh. Yes, two two things here. They're expanding on the previous epic craftable items. That's that's sick. So now we know that we're going to be able to upgrade those into something better. Awesome, dude. And new recipes, dude. New enchants are so big. I don't know if you guys have taken a look at this, but basically, like, there is almost zero good enchants for casters. Okay. Melee have a lot of really good enchants, but there's some slots that are completely dead. Like, for example, gloves. Gloves are pretty much just plus profession enchants so actually adding enchants to those slots is going to be super big for casters one because they get because they're they're down bad right now and they need a little bit of a boost so adding enchants for them is going to be huge and then just adding actual useful enchants to like more slots is is also super super cool it gives you just more options more things to sort of min max if you want if you like that tailoring the blacksmithing but also alchemy enchanting engineering as well so we're we want to spread the love around here we want to make sure everything everyone did something really cool this time so that's what we're going to do um they didn't need to give engineering more any new items they already get quite a lot of really cool engineering uh exclusive things so i hope they don't add too many engineering things but adding things for everyone else is super cool like super big like for example if for tailoring they add like parachute cloak like, I think that would be super cool. Or like how in Wrath of the Lich King, they have the like plus haste and like the haste proc on cloak um, for tailoring and like gloves as well. Adding those things to the other professions makes me want to choose them and gives you a reason to actually use them. Like, dude, if, Al if alchemy got like, like a, uh, like a slime bomb, that like did, dealt poison damage, it might actually give you like a reason to go pick alchemy over engineering. And those are the kind of like design choices they need to make with other professions. They essentially need to say, hey, like there's other cool things besides stuff in engineering. They need to add those. So I'm, hopefully we see a lot of those. Um, just like in phase one, there will be an epic quest chain to unlock this, and we won't spoil anything about that today. Cool. Uh, you're gonna have to get the game, you have to kind of go through that yourself. But uh, if you liked what we did in phase one, you'll probably like this too. Next, cool. I kind of want to talk a little bit about just some of the, the recipes here. I'm not gonna oh. go into super great detail about. Oh, bro, what is this? Rad resistance. Okay, so maybe wait, 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 wait. So maybe they aren't building on the previous items. Maybe they're just adding new ones. Improve your chance to hit spells and melee range attacks engage the radiation mitigation protocols in this helmet causing you to immediately remove all active poison and community all of nature damage for three seconds that's going to be really big in pvp actually one of the big things right now is stacking different ways to remove poisons to get rid of like hunter dots and stuff um and rogue poisons and things like that this is actually going to be super super big a really good cooldown uh so for tailoring increase the damage and healing done by magical spells and effects by 22 that is big on a head slot plus also plus 10 stamina plus level intellect this is going to be best in slot for a lot of characters and mp5 straight up mp5 is just good for all casters this is probably going to be warlock bis mage bis priest bis um pretty much everyone is going to want this this is insane let's read the special effect harness the latent arcane energy in the nearby air to give you a charge inspiration reducing the mana cost of all spells by 50 percent increasing the damage and healing done by by up to 50 for 12 seconds oh my god dude okay so cool so now mages will be able to just one shot you they're going to be able to make a one shot macro that's going to have arcane torrent or whatever that spell is they're going to use their headpiece and they're just going to um what is it? Arcane barrage you for literally the entirety of your health and just one shot you. This is going to be freaking nuts, dude. Plus 50 healing and damage. <laughs> up to 50. Oh, wait. Up to 50. So it's like a roll for 12 seconds. Regardless, dude, that's fucking, that's awesome. That's super cool. This is going to be nuts. And then the last one, plate. Okay, so this is going to be for like an H pal. Plus 14 stam, plus 15 int. Oh, are they actually going to make H pal gear? That would be big because they don't really have anything. Increased damage and healing done by magical spells by 21. Gain reinforced willpower, preventing silence and drop effects and spell pushback for 10 seconds. Bro, that's going to be huge for PvP. So HPAL is going to be able to pop this and just pump. 
uh, what uh, each of these are and all the stats and everything like that. As you can see, they're very wow. Powerful. But one thing I do want to kind of call out is that you'll notice that a few of. Them... Um. By the way, we want to go ahead and take a look at some of these. Um, some of these requirements here, and probably we need to find what whatever is insulating genodyne that's probably going to be a um exclusive raid material and we might want to be looking at some of the stuff to see what we should be buying right now looks like true silver is going to be pretty useful here leather true silver again faintly glowing leather i don't know if this is like in the game for leather working now but this is this is going to be big big materials you might want to level your leather working now the materials required are brand new materials to the game, and a lot of them are used across different professions. Uh, some of these similar new materials. Uh, there's definitely going to be a trading and kind of uh, economy aspect to this new these new professions recipes. Yeah. And just like everything with Season of Discovery, we're most excited to see how players share resources and information to make these things. That's yeah. all we're going to say right now. But we think it's going to be a, a pretty fun thing to uh, participate in in the next phase. So you're going to want to try to farm one of these out on one of your characters so that you can get uh, you can make hella money. Uh, a few other things we kind of want to talk about is alchemy and, and uh, enchanting. Enchanting, you get a sigil. What is this? Do you just get a sigil slot? Teaches you how to conjure a sigil of innovation. Gain an enchanted sigil of innovation, empowering you to deal up to 20 increased damage and healing with spells. And wow. This can only be applied outside of combat. So is this just a buff that you get? That's incredible, man. We might have to go enchanting instead of engineering to do damage. And damage them by spells for 35 seconds. Wow. So they're actually giving you reasons to take different, um, take different, um, whatchamacallit, I can't think of the word right now, different professions now. That's big. Anything in particular, um, you know, when we were looking at what we wanted to do here, we could obviously add more consumables and we can add more um, yeah. enchants for enchanters. And, and to a degree we did, we had our new enchanting material uh, recipes other than what you see here. Oh, wait, like, whoa, 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 wait. This is an on-use potion. This is going to sell for a ton. You're going to want to farm this out and sell these immediately. You're going to want to find this recipe so fast. <laughs> about these professions is that in a lot of cases, they don't do a whole lot for your personal throughput. If you're, if you're one of these professions, a lot of times, you you know, you can make things and a lot of times you can make a lot of gold off in yeah. terms of your actual like damage output or healing output. They they don't really bring anything that, that you can't have someone else craft for you and bring. Uh, yeah. So that's what we wanted to try here. In particular, if you'll notice on the left side, there's this uh, new enchanted sigil innovation. And what this basically is, is that this is kind of like a world buff that you can carry around in your bag and give to yourself. And essentially, if you it has a it has a thirty minute duration, but also a thirty minute cooldown. So if you if you die early, you will lose this for at least a, set, a, a some period of time before you can put it back on. Um, same thing with Alchemist here; they have the ability to make this uh, essentially damage and healing consumable or damage and attack power consumable. Great, so I'm gonna have uh, to go enchanting. Uh, it also restores a little bit of health and a little bit of mana. Um, so that's just something that's a little unique for them this time. And wow. uh, we, we hope that you like these things. We're looking for feedback on this sort of stuff for future phases. So now that we've kind of gone through an overview of uh, phase two and, and some of the things that are coming in it, uh, we do want to kind of, I guess, hit a, a few of like the frequently asked questions that we've gotten recently about things in phase one and, and some of the uh, issues that, that have popped up and, and how we're addressing those, as well as just some curiosities about what else is coming. In Here we go, before. man. Um, so Let's we're hear something about balance. Take few items and try and burn through as many of them as possible uh, to give you a better idea of, of kind of what, what's going on and what our thought process on some of this stuff is. So uh, let's just go ahead and hop right in. We will start today talking about raid schedule. Um, you know, we thought we'd start here because this is a pretty hot debate in the community right now. Yeah. We've seen a lot of great feedback on this and have weighed a great many perspectives um, about, you know, kind of when we should release the raid. Should we have it available from day one or should we wait maybe a week or some other uh, amount of time? Oh, wait, we... this isn't this isn't that big of a topic. I mean, release it whenever you want. If it gets released on day one, that's fine. If it gets released a week early, like who cares? Mock it globally. It's not really that big of a deal. While it's impossible, we feel, to do something that will make every single person happy, we do think we can strike a bit of a compromise here. Uh, we understand that, you know, the server or world first race is not just just about who can zone in first uh if the you know say if the raid unlocks at an arbitrary global time um yeah. and for a large group of players that it's also about who can get in the fastest after leveling and it's very exciting for them to see what they can yeah. do when they're under geared or maybe without their full toolkit of runes and other like pre-raid items exactly and so, you know that is one uh, argument but oh argument shoot. we've heard in favor of not but the issue is is like it's such easy content like who really cares man like who's really racing the world first and like actually think it thinks it means something like what's going to matter is going to be the speed runs like the speed runs week to week that's that's really like what people are competing for delaying it and we think it's a very compelling one it is very exciting to to participate in that and to watch that it is exciting it is exciting to participate and watch i'll give them that but it's not really that big of a deal on the other hand though if you're one of those players the many players who really like to take their time leveling, we realize that that three day lockout puts you in a position where you may miss several lockouts before you hit 40. And while it's pretty unlikely to actually matter all that much in the long run, it doesn't. You will have plenty of lockouts this phase. Yeah. I mean, how many lockouts? We had like 
20 something lockouts already. And we still have like three weeks until phase two comes out. Like, it, like getting the very first, getting the very first lockout. Like it, it doesn't matter, man. It really doesn't. Uh, it does still feel kind of bad. And one of the things we wanted to avoid with this season was too much feeling of FOMO. Um, okay. So, by way of a compromise, uh, what we're looking at doing this time is we're, we will not. If you want to decrease FOMO, then why don't you just make it to where it's not like a three-day lockout, like make it like a one-week lockout so you can zone in for your first week. You do the lockout, you're done. You know what I mean? Like to me, having a three-day lockout increases FOMO because you have to. You feel like you have to be on every three days. Not delay the opening of the raid okay wait the raid will be available for day one with caveats the first two lockouts will be a weekly lockout on the week of the february 12th the normal cadence will begin um okay this just slows down the the no lives like me and gives more time for the dads this is fine but we will be putting the first two lockouts on kind of a normal weekly lockout timer so that means that would reset That's on fine. like tuesday in north america uh wednesday in europe and, and so on and so forth and whatever your regional unlock time or reset time is um this means that the first lockout will occur on february 13th again in north america in the morning with maintenance and then the second will occur the following tuesday on february 20th again in north america in the morning with maintenance so each region you can offset for your regional maintenance time uh, what this allows us to do is, you know, if enable folks who really want to push day one to get in as fast as possible and get that first like world first or server first clear or just the bragging rights of saying you did it first. That's something that we don't want to take away from from you. That makes sense. Um, but this also reduces the number of lockouts that are possible in that time period so that any p players who are leveling, leveling a little bit more casually are a little slower. Pay this just means that I'll get to level like four characters um in the first two weeks instead of just like two characters that's what this means this is this is a w may not feel like they missed out on, on as much um it's not a perfect solution and that's one thing we really want to stress is that when you deal with a game like world of warcraft and and on this scale there's no objectively correct answers there are sure. every every decision we make there's going to be people who like it and there's going to be people who would prefer yeah of else. course but we feel that this acknowledges both major perspectives yeah, this is a good compromise uh, without really depriving either group like of i something said special so i would have said screw all the tryhards like you're gonna get it you're gonna get like one week delayed and you're just gonna have to deal with it but i mean this this is fine too i mean it, the raid coming out one week later is not a big deal it, it doesn't really matter uh, we really hope that uh, that you like it, and we're going to keep looking at feedback on this. If this is something that, that that works out well, we may carry this forward into future phases, and if not, we may just go back to the drawing board and try something else. But we really, really, really appreciate the ton of feedback we've gotten from the community on this. We've been watching social media. We've been watching forums. We've really been watching a lot of the commentary on this, and we couldn't have uh, we, nothing we do, uh, we do without looking at and listening to what you guys are saying. So thank you so much for that. Uh, next thing we want to talk about a little bit is uh, PvP matchmaking. Um, you know, we realize here we go, man. Here we go. Let's see what they're gonna it do. Can be frustrating to get matched against a match against a full pre-made when you're uh -huh. solo. Uh, however, we do still have significant concerns about completely bifurcating PvP queues yep. into a separate PvP yep. or small group queue. What this yep. means essentially is if you're in a group of five or less, you'll have a dramatically higher chance to also get matched against groups of five or less. And if you're in a group of six or more, same deal. You'll have a higher chance to get match against larger groups or full groups. Okay, this is this is good. So this is a good compromise. This is again a good compromise. So basically, if if you're in a big group, you're gonna have more likely chance to be queued with premades. And if you're in a small group, you're likely to get a better chance to be queued against uh, other small groups. So now the the farming strategy is going to be like finding out which like you're probably gonna want want to run like groups of three or something like that. And then, and then uh, farm that way will probably be the best, or maybe it's like a group of five or four or something, whatever is the minimum amount to get queued into the solo queue. And then for, um, and then so for pre-mades, they'll get to face pre-mades constantly, unless, unless the queues are really, really long and then none of this will matter. That's awesome. This is a good compromise. This makes this makes people that actually want to play the game at a high level happy, and it makes people who want to complain about um, solo queuing in a team based game it'll it'll make them happy. So this is this is overall W. If the queues are long or the matchmaker can't, and it won't fuck the people who actually play the game uh, in pre mates with like hour long queues.
find a good group that fits within these parameters after a certain amount of time, uh, it'll abandon these rules and go ahead and match you with the first available so you can at least play a game. Perfect. Um, but by and large, we feel that this will help the situation a lot for those who just kind of want to queue up uh, solo or just with a few friends and not feel like they're always going against pre-made. We do want to stress again, though, that we firmly believe that activities like PvP Battlegrounds are just more fun and less stressful when players group up and coordinate. Yeah. Uh, we can understand that if you you know just want a PvP and you don't want to join a group for it, it, it you know, it can be a little bit more frustrating than you feel it needs to be. But yeah. ultimately coordination within your team, whether it's a pre-made or not, is going to be the key to success. Yeah, in absolutely. An activity like like organized PvP. And that's exact that's exactly what I said in my in my video talking about this. It is a team-based PvP objective game. That's how it was designed. That's how it's meant to be played. You shouldn't punish people that are playing it in that way and rewarding people that want to play it as like as like a solo experience. And now this is great because the new PvP world event, the Blood Moon or whatever, you're going to be able to go in and just PvP. It's a, literally a solo event free-for-all where you just go in and you fight people. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now they have the outlet. They can go do that. Go have that single combat PvP experience. And you have the, also the outlet for team-based play. This this is good. This is really good. When you're playing against other players, even when queuing solo, we encourage you to be as uh, positive team members and coordinate with your groups to have the best time possible. So next, another common question uh, is that when you, what the leveling buff will look like? We mentioned this at BlizzCon that whenever you, the level cap increases, we will put in a level, uh, an XP buff for the previous level. Okay. Rate. And uh, so what you, you can expect, you know, uh, uh, for that. Also, we've gotten a lot of questions about what you can expect if you say you've done all the quests available to you at yes. level 25. Big problem what, for people who are farm gold. It, you know, from like 25 to 30 if you've done all those quests. Yeah. Um, so for the first uh, question, we'll be providing a flat 50% XP buff. Discovers the light. 1 to 25 XP buff. Okay, cool. 50% XP buff from 1 to 25. Cool. This will let you level your alts. BFD raid will give a sizable amount of XP upon completion. Waylaid supplies will give greatly increased XP. Hell yeah, dude. From the 1 through 25 range, so that if you do start a new character or a new alt, or if you have a friend that's joining in phase 2, they sh you should be able to get caught up uh, to level 25 fairly quickly with that buff. Um, the other thing that we're doing in, in order to help the second situation where you may... So the meta gonna be, is going to be for... <laughs> the meta for the super sweaty people is going to be go buy a bunch of gold online, go farm waylaid supplied crates, turn those supplied crates into um, into the actual like turn-ins because you can have infinite amount of the turn-ins in your inventory at one time. And they're going to go turn these into the, uh, to the vendor on release. And by the way, they fucked... They, Sorry, they deleted the Warsong Gulch um, rep stacking in your mailbox, so you won't be able to do that. But you will be able to do the Waylight Supplies now, so the sweaty boys are going to get to like level 30 in like a minute, <laughs> which is going to be awesome to see. Feel like you've, you've done all the quests you can and you're not sure how best to level. We are going to make the Black Fathom Deeps raid give a very significant amount of experience when cleared in phase two when you're Perfect. over level 25. It's keeping the lockout it has now, a three-day lockout, to encourage players not to just do it every single day and engage in other activities, but it will be very lucrative and worth doing. Perfect. Uh, as long as it continues to give experience, which will probably be sometime into the mid or late 30s. So what we'll do then is we'll run splits for the BFD raid where you'll get all your char all your characters one BFD raid lockout, and then you'll go into like your dungeon, your SM dungeon farms, and you'll do your SM dungeon farms until... Uh, until until you get uh until you get max level basically lastly uh waylaid supplies are also seeing some adjustments we're not quite ready to talk about the full suite of adjustments coming here because some okay. of them are still undergoing tuning uh, but we are going to significantly increase the xp rewards for it particularly in the ones from the 25 to 40 range uh, there will be new waylaid supplies turn-ins and we want to make sure that they're very rewarding and there's something that you want to do and we're also looking at removing some of the frustrations from this again not quite ready to talk okay great so that means that they're going to increase the cap from one so it's going to be like five or like three or something so that's cool that's good waylay supplies need need uh need that change talk about the full details there but um you know if you've if you've had had concerns with some of the frustrating aspects of them then then we're, we're hoping to address some of those in the next phase as well so stay tuned to look for a little bit more yeah, there's only one frustrating aspect so they're going to change the amount that you can hold about that. 
and uh, we'll have more, uh, you know, as we get really close to batch or the uh, phase launch. A few minor ad adjustments to Ashenvale are coming. Uh, there will be a fewer people in Ashenvale specifically when the level cap increases. So we're going to go ahead and uh, move the event to a rigid three hour timer. Uh, similar to what we uh, what Anna talked right. about with the <laughs> we've uh, gone full circle on Ashenville. This will be basically be every three hours on the on the mark, uh, and uh, it will happen without player intervention. Uh, do note though, we don't want to make you choose between doing an Ashenvale battle and a Stranglethorn Veil vale battle. So the Ashenvale vale timer will be offset by one hour from Stranglethorn. So Stranglethorn Great. starts at noon. This will start at one p.m. and they should never overlap. Yeah, so we're we're pretty excited about that. Uh, and we hope that uh, the Ashenvale battles uh, continue. Great. That's awesome. Uh, what are the things that uh, is kind of a, a common question and topic is kind of what are we going to do with the world buffs in the next phase? Uh -huh. um, simply put, we're going to go ahead and cap them. Uh, the Ashenvale weekly cusp world buff is going to be capped. Awesome. Awesome. At level 39. And the Black Fathom Deeps world buff is also going to be capped at 39. So you can enjoy those while you're leveling. But once you hit 40, uh, you'll no longer ba basically be able to gain the benefit of those. Um, please also note that the strangle. Cool. So there's, they're just going to rearrange these into different buffs, basically. For Unveil PvP event, will not actually have a world buff this time, but no more done well. Our goal is really to keep each phase's world buffs fun and exciting, but we don't want to add too much overhead to the evolved yeah. game. And we don't want it to be a slog to have to go all over the world. To yeah, we don't. We don't want to have to go. Okay, so I need to get ready for raid. I got to go do Ash and Veil. Vale. Then I got to go do Blood Moon. Then I got to go. I got to go run a BFD, get the trinket real quick, so I can get the world drop to go get the Black Feather Deeds buff. Oh, and then I have to do. Uh, I have to go turn them. Go get the No No Mergon turn in wherever that's at. Oh, and then I have to go get the Song Flower eventually. Uh, and then I got to go sit in Orgrimmar and get the. You know, it, it, it can be a lot. So I'm glad that they're doing this. I'm glad they're just they're just getting rid of them at max level. Some of these additional ones at max level. I mean, they'll be replaced. Like they'll have they'll have similar world buffs. So this is this is overall overall W. We don't want to have to go get all these fucking buffs to get all of these world buffs. And especially once we hit sixty, we don't want you to have to slog through going all over the world and getting every yeah. world buff. Um, yeah. So. Uh, that's where we landed on that. We're obviously open to feedback on any of this. So uh, please uh, let us know what you think. Uh, profession specializations. This is another really hot topic in the community. Just like with phase one, when we capped professions at 150, with phase two, we will be capping them at 225. Confirmed. 225. Addition, we've decided that profession specializations will also not be available until phase oh. two. So that's when the level cap goes to 50. We feel that profession specializations outside of engineering and a few other exceptions are kind of lackluster in original so this means that you won't be able to go into gnomish engineering and do the crude scope um thing that people are talking about so this is good you won't be able to get the next level engineering stuff on just one faction like for example like gnomes have access to gnomish engineering but there's no goblin engineering available because you don't have the additional plus 15 engineering that gnomes get overall so like for example on gnomes right now like you can get 175 engineering instead of 150 because they have plus 15 engineering at level at 225. This would allow you to get um, gnomish engineering uh, and that's not available for horde. So it makes it to where like there's some items you can craft and then there's a market involved with a neutral auction house where you can sell specific gnomish engineering items over to the horde that they actually need to actually do really good damage. And it causes a lot of problems. So I think it's good. Actually, they decided to go with not running the professional profession specializations. Keeps a lot of like the weird stuff out for this phase. For a while, and we really want to do something fun and cool here, and we really want to take our time to do it right. So for cool, phase three, so there's going to be a new system at level at, for the next phase with professions where they're going to release uh, specific specializations for each for like each uh, for each profession, like they do in like in like Wrath, where you have like the uh, spell fire tailoring, you have like ebon weave tailoring and then you have like uh a, a, like elixir professional or specialization you have like potion specialization so that, that's going to be cool that's going to be a cool system they're going to add i'm excited for that professional specializations are going to have a, a, a large focus and uh you know obviously we're not going to talk about it's it going to be a whole system basically more information cool. on profession specializations as we move closer to phase three. w thank you Another common phase question three leak. that we get that is somewhat frustrating. To Here we go, boys. Kind of the Here we go. About it, 
the faster bad actors can work around our efforts, but it's botting and exploitative accounts uh, in general. Botting is sort of a colloquial term. It includes a lot of things, including just exploitative gameplay yeah. that, that, that players engage in. Um, this is a huge, huge problem in Season of Discovery, guys. Huge problem. And uh, it, it has a negative impact on the game. It really does. It's something we don't like. It's something we, we actually hate. We spend a lot of yeah. time and a lot of effort trying to combat um, it and- right now the economy in season of discovery is destroyed let me tell you what i mean by that right now let's say you're unemployed and you're looking for work you can go have a full-time job farming stockades on a mage essentially you make three to six gold or let's estimate five gold for each person uh five gold from each person plus your raw let's not including your raw materials from actually farming the instance if you get five gold from four people boosting them and stockades and people do this by the way you get 20 gold um you get 20 gold per run each run can be done uh in about 15 minutes and you can get right underneath the five you essentially do five lockouts of an instance every hour you can hit that lockout cap so in in one hour you can farm 100 gold each gold each gold um, goes for like anywhere between 20 and 30, uh, I'm sorry, 15 to 20 something gold, or sorry, 15 cents to 20 something cents per gold. So essentially you can farm 15 to $20 of gold per hour and you can turn around and sell that gold. You can literally have a part, a, a full-time job selling wow gold and make above minimum wage right now and while we can't really talk about the specifics of what we're doing we do want and mages are fly hacking rfc they're fly hacking stockades uh rogues are fly hacking into open chests and and stockades like it, it's a big big problem I talk about some really exciting new tech that's coming with phase two we've had this in limited testing on live both in classic of its various flavors and modern for quite some time okay we've seen some very positive results from it and so we we want to set expectations that you know, there's never going to be a time where, where World of Warcraft or really any online game is going to be completely yeah, free of bad it's not possible. malicious accounts. But uh, we are very positive about the results we've seen from this new tech. Even if it even if it only gets like 50% of bots, huge, huge W from Blizzard for addressing this issue and talking with us about it. Like telling us that they're actually working on something because... You know, radio silence on this topic is like very, very hurtful. Like we're like, hey man, there's tons of freaking bots everywhere. Please do something. And oftentimes you don't hear anything from Blizzard. So them just coming out and saying like, yeah, this is a problem and we're actively working on it. That's big. That's big, man. And we're really you feel heard. To see it rolled out. Paradoxically as well, kind of the more effective we are at some of these things, the, the, the more outwardly visible uh, the bad actors can become. Uh, a lot of times following many of our ban waves, you may actually see increased bot activity uh, as bot farms essentially spawn, spin up new accounts and start over. But there's been a few instances of, of this happening. We do a large ban wave and then everyone, you know, I see videos posted online of streams yeah. of bots going from one part of the world to the other. But when you see that stuff and when you report it, it actually helps us clamp down on that new method as well. And it gets it gets into it gets the the bot farms into a position where it, they are constantly kind of two steps forward and like two steps backwards. So that is really helpful. And as much as it's frustrating to see, we really want to encourage you to just to continue to help us by reporting things. And we're going to continue to do exhaustive work on our side. For this. W, bro. Always a frustrating thing, never easy to talk about, but we really appreciate your patience with us. W. So the last topic uh, that we really want to talk about. What? Is kind of a big one uh, is just... Jumping right into it, starting with phase two of season of discovery, we're, we're going to be experimenting with a new policy change. What? CDKP will no longer be permitted in season of discovery. Realms. Oh my God. To kind of recap uh, for anyone who does not know what GDKP or gold. A GDKP is essentially a money laundering scheme within World of Warcraft where people who buy gold, which is against the TOS, come into a raid group, spend money on items within a raid, and essentially wash that gold down from what was, you know, gold from a gold buyer, and they inject it, re-inject it into the economy with, you know, 
some bad actor players, some you know players like me who just need gold and we don't buy gold. So we go to these GDKPs to get gold. It's essentially a money laundering scheme within World of Warcraft and they're rampant. I mean, if we logged in right now to, to World of Warcraft Season of Discovery, there's going to be GDKP, GDKP listings all over the place. Countless videos talking about how terrible it is for the economy, how terrible it is for the player base, how bad GDKPs are and how they need to be destroyed. And honestly, I can't believe Blizzard is actually about to do something about it. Bid uh, raids or dungeons are, it's essentially a raid or a dungeon run where the loot rules or uh, uh, is that all loot that is uh, distributed is essentially purchased with gold. Mm -hmm. So items, uh, an item will drop, it's then put up for bid uh, by the loot master or whoever's doing the the, the loot uh, and interested bar parties then bid gold for the item when the highest bid wins. And when the gold is received, it's split within the participants of the raid. This is something we've been discussing for a very long time on WoW Classic, and it's not a decision we've arrived at lately. How do they it's how do they enforce this though? The GDKP has some benefits to individuals who don't want to be tied to it. Yeah, so the benefit to a GDKP is in, in raids, you might go through an entire raid and you might not ever get a piece of loot. You might never get the item that you're looking for. A GDKP incentivizes the entire group to get a reward out of the raid. Maybe you're full BIS. Maybe there are no items for you to get. Well, if you go to a GDKP, you can do the raid, you can do damage, and as a reward, since you don't need gear anymore, you get gold at the end of the run. It's essentially like a carry. So that's the big pro to GDKPs is it incentivizes everyone in the group to stay because everyone is guaranteed on a reward. It might not be a large reward because the pot might be small, but you are guaranteed some sort of reward from the run itself every single time, which is the big positive to GDKPs. A traditional guild or set raise schedule and GDKPs are, while largely transactional, another social activity in the game. And we're always hesitant to discourage anything that gets people in groups and playing together. Absolutely. However, we do remain concerned that GDKP erodes traditional guild and social structures that are in many cases the basis of our most fond memories of original World of True. Warcraft. And it's undeniable. For example, on Wrath of the Lich King on Grobulus, the top four guilds on Grobulus were all GDKP guilds. Every single one of them. They 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 take over. Like like there's like before there's like social guilds, raiding guilds. Now there's social guilds, raiding guilds, and GDKP guilds goes that strictly do GDKPs. Well, the GDKP contributes to and drives a lot of malicious accounts, illicit activity, yep. RMT, botting, all of the yep. things we just talked it about. It drives a lot of it, yes. Season of Discovery is highly experimental. And it's because you can essentially turn gold into items. It's it's kind of a convoluted process, but you can do it. Nature. And we're gonna, we take chances. And this is another chance we're taking. Uh, we want to give an honest try to a version of World of Warcraft without GDKP present. And this is our best opportunity for that. Sure. So as of the launch of Phase 2 on February 8th, GDKP will no longer be permitted in the Season of Discovery. Uh, we're going to release uh, additional communications with a little another FAQ to kind of go with this FAQ, talking about this. And, you know, once we do, we'll have that posted on forums and stuff. We'd really like to hear uh, what you think. Um, and we're going to really monitor feedback closely on this. This ultimately, this is a test and ultimately this decision came as a result of your feedback. And so, uh, you know, we want to hear more of what you think of this. We want to hear how it goes as we move through this next phase. And if it doesn't work out, we'll revisit this policy for, for future phases. We really appreciate everyone who has expressed that feedback and concerns on this topic. Wow. Thank you. Actually a crazy thing that they're doing. So with that, I think we're done with today's presentation. Um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, heartfelt thanks from the WoW Classic development team. Insane, man. Absolutely insane. What a crazy amount of info to come out of this. Wow. I'm so excited for phase two, man. So excited. SOT, SOD team, you are absolutely crushing it. Best news I've ever experienced from Blizzard in my life. The Classic team continues to show they listen and are capable enough on actioning ideas. Microsoft fired the camera, man. <laughs> Loving the communication from you guys. Thanks for being so chill and open. Thanks for banning GDKP nonsense. Let's see the, ma the majority of the community. Please keep it up. Big W. Big, big W, man. I'm excited.